Good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So obviously the big news on Friday was non-farm payrolls, which came in much stronger than expected. I think they were looking for about 180,000 jobs that were created, 271,000, so almost 100,000 jobs more. Pretty much means now that there is definitely going to be a rate hike in December. Well, obviously there's no such thing as definitely, but it's incredibly likely that the Fed will now raise rates in December. And you've seen the US dollar broadly making gains against most of its majors. And there has not yet really been a massive amount of turmoil in the financial markets as some people had worried about. Obviously, the US there is actually moved up because it's a big plus for the US economy. Uh, big questions about international earnings, of course, with the dollar rallying the way that it is. And that's why we're going to stop in flat a little bit this morning. What a lot of traders would expect is that the markets would be weak to flat lines over the next few days or weeks until the market gets comfortable with the fact that this is actually longer term positive for the US economy and um, things could uh, be back on the, on the up soon after that. Emerging markets will be pressured because they have a lot of debt in dollars and now the dollar will be increasing in value. Uh, so their debt pile is basically getting bigger relative to their local currencies. That's gonna be hard for them. And it's like, it's kind of thinking about the knock on effect of, of that against the major um, business partners in Europe and the US and China that a lot of traders need to think about. But nevertheless, with the US 30, potential support 17,747s, potential support and 18,111 is still potential resistance. Technicals obviously overbought. Um, the declining MACD histogram, you know, if this does turn south, a lot of technical pressure will be, apply will be applied to it. Um, but I just don't think you can necessarily get anything too aggressive. So, looking at the UK 100, um, it had managed to get positive territory yesterday, on Friday, sorry. Uh, it's gapped slightly lower this morning, probably in the back of the fact that most commodity markets are lower um, because of that pressure of the stronger US dollar. Uh, but I'm sure that they will recover at some point. And where we are right now, uh, we're in the middle of two ranges with uh, 6,300 still being longer term potential support. We're trading below the 21 period SMA. Um, the other technicals are showing kind of divergence quite, if you look at the, stochastic, sorry, the slow stochastic, it's certainly moving down um, quite aggressively versus the uh, RSI. Uh, almost a head and shoulders formation kind of developing here with a shoulder, neck, shoulder, and you could be looking at a neckline break uh, if that momentum continues. So let's just kind of just draw that, that neckline on there. Uh, we'll see how that pans out. So I can actually clean up my charts ever so slightly because we're quite far away from a lot of these other areas. Okay, right. So that kind of gives you a bit of an idea of where we are with the UK market. Um, let's move on to Japan 225. Now, Japan is going great guns this morning as dollar yen has accelerated to the upside, uh, obviously with the non farms coming in quite strong. Uh, you've got one country who are looking to raise rates, another country who are looking to uh, have a big reduction uh, in the value of the currency to try and do more quantitative easing. And uh, that's a perfect storm for Japan 225, makes their international companies more competitive. So we'll look at dollar yen in a minute, but nice technical breakout on Japan. Uh, 20,087 will be the next potential support. So let's have a look at that breakout in dollar yen, very tasty. 124.42 is the next potential support. Uh, had a fantastic day on Friday, closing at the top end of this range, properly broken out for that, that, that pattern, which is great, finally. Uh, it's got a long way to go until it breaks through 126, though. Um, but certainly things are primed for, uh, for dollar yen to uh, certainly have the fundamentals backing up its directional move. And the question is, will, when will Japan do something in regards to stimulating their own economy uh, they obviously want to hold that back for when they really need it but a lot of traders will be looking at that so looking at west texas it's come off three days in a row there's the three black crows uh, which is just three big red body candles on the downside we're below 45 spot 85 we've talked about this a lot over the last couple of months 42 dollars is potential support 49 30 if 39 40 49 40 sorry it's potential resistance and we're kind of using this 45.85 as, as an oscillator because it's kind of very much in the middle. And currently on the bo bottom end of that, of that pattern, MACD's flat, other technicals relatively neutral. Um, it looks to be that West Texas is going to take the rise in interest rates as a short-term uh, negative symbol. So looking at gold, unsurprisingly, gold getting absolutely destroyed below 1,100 with uh, 1072 being the next potential support. And we've not even had that rate hike yet. So we've still got the FOMC session going to happen in November. And that's kind of when they're going to say we're going to do something in December. So 
Um, we've had a kind of a kind of a dead cat bounce, I guess, maybe first thing this morning. Um, it's gapped higher, so already off the session lows. You might get retracement back up to uh, to 10.98, and a lot of traders will think about that as a, as an opportunity, depending on your own view on gold. That could be an opportunity to go short, or if you think there's going to be a recovery, you might get a technical breakout on the other side. So let's have a look at dollar, yeah, at euro dollar and GBP USD. So euro dollar obviously had a bad day there on uh, on Friday, uh, as the dollar just uh, advanced across most of the majors. We've had that kind of retracement so far today towards one spot zero seven eighty six. Longer term potential support is at 105.24. And if we finish up with GBP USD, uh, you can see that it's had two very bad uh, candle days. This is after Kearney's speech. Uh, this is after FOMC. Um, comfortably below one spot 51.85. Longer term potential support, one spot 48.13. Right. So, I'm very strong divergence there as well. So today, not a huge amount. Obviously, over the weekend, we would have had some data. We had trade balance from China, which came in worse than expected. Even though the Chinese market is actually up this morning about 1.6%. Tomorrow, we've got a Chinese CPI. And then on Wednesday, let's see what we have. We've got unemployment data from the UK. In fact, there's just nothing much really exciting macro data-wise. Until you get onto Thursday, we've got CPI. For Germany, industrial production, employment data, and uh, weekly petroleum status update. Awesome. Okay, so guys, keep your eye on the chart forum as ever. Make insights part of your layer going forward. And join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.